So given this uh, overall picture, so uh, we see this change. This doesn't mean that the Chinese government does not support minority language education. If you look at the constitution, if you look at the autonomy law, there are still certain articles supporting the use and maintenance of those languages. And if you talk with the people in the Ministry of Education, the pe those people in charge in the Ministry of uh, Education in the State Commission on Ethnic Affairs, they are very open, particularly those professional uh, officers. They are very open to multilingualism. For example, uh, uh, recently I, met, I, I uh, added uh, one article by the uh, by Jin Xinhua, the uh, uh, Je Director General of the uh, of the Propaganda Department of the uh, State Commission on Ethnic Affairs. For example, she uh, recognizes uh, the use of minority languages in schools is uh, is a cultural heritage, as uh, the benefits of modern time education, and as a resources for the community. And I uh, added another article by the uh, vice chairman of the uh, State Language Commission. Uh, in his article, he recognizes uh, the use of minority languages aspects of human rights. So when you talk with the officials at the uh, central government level, uh, they see very much uh, the minority languages as resources as rights. So there are problems uh, in practice. The two major problems in practice. So one of the problems for many of them, they, all, they consider minority languages as resources for minority communities. So it's, it's one way. They fail to consider the minority languages actually all resources for the state too. So it's very important to make them to realize that minority languages are resources both for minority communities and for the state. So that's very important if we want them to make the investment. So for example, the Chinese government now pr promotes uh, Suzhi education. That's uh, education originally based on, uh, on uh, education in China, you know, is, uh, is, uh, is examination oriented. Now they want to deviate from that. They want to uh, have uh, character quality education. So minority languages can be used for that. And also, also minority languages can be uh, 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 as resources uh, for, for, the, uh, for the Chinese state's uh, soft power. Uh, for example, having the problems, constantly having uh, having conflicts with minority groups weakens China. It doesn't strengthen China. So how can they resolve the problems? They should do it in a way to contain, accommodate minority languages and minority cultures in order to build what they call in their uh, discourse a harmonious society. And that's good for China. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and that's the uh, that's one of the problems. Another pro problem is uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, another problem is in the uh, the promotion of an unbalanced bilingualism. So, for example, now the Chinese government, even when it supports bilingual education, it's subtractive bilingual education. The government wants minorities to trans very soon. Uh, using minority languages as a tool as then very soon they are banned and they are they are uh, they speak chinese they're using chinese
So that's one of the problems why there's, there's, there's a problem from, uh, high school, uh, from uh, primary schools to middle schools and to colleges. And one of the, another problem is elective bilingualism. It doesn't promote it at all. No Chinese, no Han Chinese learning minority languages. And another problem only pro fully supports my bilingual, edu bilingual education, that is English, Chinese, Chinese English bilingual education. That's the Chinese government really support. So the underlying problem for this situation, of course, is still monolingualism. Is underlining there is goes with the inclusive Chinese nation. Okay, I'll solutions. I'll finish this in a minute. Or two, two. So the state needs to promote a proper state language education. So of course, the Chinese state needs to educate its officials about multilingualism, its, its rights and its resources. But that is not enough. I think what Tra Trace, Station, uh, Trace Foundation does in China ha helps the Chinese government officials to realize minority languages, Tibetan languages, are actually resources for the community. And of course, uh, also uh, human rights. And eventually, China needs to maintain a balanced language order. That is, each language should have the right place in this order. There shouldn't be just Chinese. There are many other languages. The question is, where do you put those languages in this order? If you give, you should give those languages an order, and then you should give them resources appropriate to this order. So the eventual question is, uh, from outside world, like what uh, Trace Foundation does, also within the community, because we know there are some communities who are doing a better job than other communities. Uh, there are questions about the laws. The laws are the same, but there are communities which are doing better, there are communities which are doing poorly. Why? That's how the community can drive uh, the local governments to do more. Uh, that's, a, that's a question to be uh, explored. And that's, I think, is for the uh, Tibetan community. The Tibetan community actually is in a good, uh, uh, in a good uh, situation mm -hmm. to explore this and to uh, promote Tibetan more. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you.